Hey everybody, today I'm going to be talking about a really important command called rsync. Now a lot of people have been asking me how to move stuff from one place on their hard drive to another, one pool to another, and they've been asking, hey, should I use copy or should I, can use, should I use move? And the answer to that is no, you shouldn't be using those things. You should be using rsync. The reason for that is rsync is a much more powerful tool than just a straight copy uh, or a straight uh, move command in the command line. And the reason for that is the features of rsync. So we're going to go here to data protection, and I'm going to show you guys an rsync task. Now, this is a little bit different than what I'm going to show you today because I'm going to do this within my TrueNAS. But if you wanted to do this with a remote computer, in other words, a different server in your house or a server somewhere else that's on the same VPN or LAN that you're on, uh, you would use the rsync task GUI, or you can use the command line. It either will work, but the GUI is a little bit easier. Um, and this basically says, hey, um, and you'll see, you know, again, user and remote host or remote module name. This is all for the other computer. But the reason I want to show you this screen is because it shows you some of the options that we have with the rsync command. So the rsync command is not like a copy where it just takes everything in the source and copies it to everything in the destination, just overwriting everything like a bulldozer. rsync is a much more, it's, it's like more like a scalpel. So let's look at some of the things that rsync can do. So you have the option for times here, which keeps, saves the preser preservation model, uh, of times. You have the option to run compression, which is a great thing with rsync because it'll speed up your file transfers for free. It's amazing. Archive is the most important one. It's a lot of flags all at once. It's like all of these things. Basically, archives um, does is, when rsync is run, set to run recursively, it preserves the same links, permissions, modification times, groups, special files when it's running as root. Owner device files and special files are also preserved. So it's, it's, it's very powerful. Archive is a really cool thing you definitely want to be using. It preserves all your permissions. Uh, delete is really cool. Let's say I run rsync more than once. Let's say I have directory A and directory B. If I copy directory A to directory B the first time, all my, cop all my files are going to be copied over. Let's say I at a later time, maybe another week or two later, I've made some changes in directory A and I re rsync it to directory B. One of the cool things is rsync is going to only copy the changes between the two directories in that time. It's not going to just recopy the entire directory. The second thing I can do if I use the double dash delete flag is it'll look at the source and look at the destination and say, hey, I see that the so somebody deleted some file in the source that does exist in the destination. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it from the destination. The reason that's important is if you do re like repetitive, like for example, a cron job rsync task, which is something I actually do, uh, if I don't use the double dash delete option, as I delete things from the source, they just pile up in the destination because they never get deleted. So in the end, the destination folder becomes much, much bigger than the source folder and just gets, ends up sucking up all the space. So I have to use the double dash delete to make sure that I don't build up all this stuff in the destination that no longer exists in the source and I don't need. Quiet just suppresses messages on the remote host, which is not a big deal. Preserve permissions, 100% you want to do that. You always want to preserve your permissions. Extended attributes, yes, you want to do that. Um, and delay updates, you can use that if you want. But these are just some options here that you guys can visually see. I'm going to show you guys in the command line what it looks like to rsync one directory to another. So let's come over here and look at our data sets. Our stacks directory is going to be a great example of what we want to use here. So I'm going to create a new data set called stacks score backup. Let's hit save. Now we know within our stack, let me turn to pull list. We know within our stacks directory, there's some stuff here. So let's go to our shell. I'm going to show you what's in stacks. Now we know what stacks is. Stacks is my dockage stack. First thing I want to do is I want to be root. Cool. These are all of my dockage stacks. So if someone, again, we did, I did a video just a day ago on backup and restore. If you want to back up your dockage containers or Docker containers in this case that you're running through dockage, this is a great way to do it. In fact, this is exactly how I do it. <clears throat> so let's say I want to copy all these files. Let's come back up a directory. <clears throat> we have stacks. Oh, I thought I just created something. Let's go back to my data. Protect. Let's go back to my data sets. Uh, I put stacks back up under stacks. Let's delete this and move it back out. Always be careful where you make stuff. Let's make a new data set here. Stacks. Backup. There we go. Now we're correct. So let's go back into my shell. Okay. Okay, so now I see st stacks and I see stacks backup. So let's run an rsync task. Now we're going to do rsync. 
Uh, and the next thing we're going to need, if I could spell rsync correctly, is the source. So because usually I would say, hey, always use the full path, but because I'm already in mount tank, I can just designate something under mount tank. Now, I recommend you use tab complete because tab complete will let you know if you're doing the right thing. For example, if I go to tab complete something and it's not completing, it probably means I'm typing something wrong. And if you don't know what tab complete is, it means I'm going to type in just a few letters of what I want, and then I'm going to hit the tab key on my keyboard, and then the command line is going to automatically type the rest for me. So my source, I can actually type it as mount, tank, and then stacks, but I don't need to do that because I'm already in the mount tanks directory. So I can just type, start here and start typing stacks and hit my tab key and it'll fill it out for me. So that's my source. My destination is going to be stacks underscore backup. That's my destination. Now, there's something I messed up here that I want to point out to you guys. Stacks does not have a little slash after it, and it needs to. The reason for that is if I just say stacks with no little backslash, what's going to happen is it's going to copy the entire folder to this folder. And you're thinking, hey, that's what I want. But no, what's going to happen is under stacks backup, I'm going to have a new folder named stacks and then a whole bunch of stuff underneath that. And I, I don't want that. I want everything under stacks to go to everything under stacks backup. I want these fold Ooh. I want these folders to stay just the way they are. So I'm going to do two backslashes like that. That means everything under the stacks directory is going to come to everything under the stacks backup directory. Now I need some cool features of rsync. I want to do an AVHC and I want to do a double dash progress. What this means is some of those features I showed you for, like archive, V is verbose, Z is compression. We want to use some of those features. So this is how I use them. So I activate those features. This is like clicking the checkbox in the command line. The double dash progress is going to scroll on the screen in front of me everything that it's doing as it's doing it. So instead of me just hitting enter and guessing what's happening, I'm actually going to get a, a printed list of everything that's happening. So let's run this command. There we go. See that printed list? It's doing everything. You'll see, see it's flying by. Let's give it a second here. And it's copying. There we go. So it's done. It sent 155 megabytes. It's received 347 kilobytes. Don't worry about that. The speed was 11.5 megabytes per second. Super slow, but um, that's only because this is a virtualized computer. The total size is 700 megabytes. The speed up is 4.53. So I actually got quite a bit of speed up. This means I got four and a half times the speed I would have gotten had I not used the Z flag. So now let's come out here and let's look at, let's clear the screen. Um, let's print my screen again, see where I am. So let's go to stacks backup. And let's take a look. And there it all is. All with preserved permissions. So that's how I move my entire directory from one place to another. Now, you might be thinking, oh, that's pretty cool. Can I do it with other stuff? Let's look at some other data sets. Uh, what about my configs directory? I got a whole bunch of stuff in here I'd probably like to move and back up. This is really good for my stacks uh, data set because my stacks data set has got a bunch of subdirectories. My configs da uh, data set has a bunch of sub data sets. There's a difference between a data set and a directory in ZFS, which is what ZFS is the file system that TrueNOS uses. There is a big difference, and that has to do with the way that the data is handled. A data set and a directory are two different things. They both look like folders to the human eye when I'm scrolling through here, but they're not. They're not the same. So if you want to copy the configs data set to configs backup, for example, you want to use the data protection tab and you want to do a replication task. This is very different than doing rsync. So I want you to go back and watch my um, backup and restore video on how to use replica replication tasks because it is not the same. If you use rsync for your configs and rsync it to configs backup, um, it's not going to work. Like Actually, I did that as an experiment, for example, just to see how it was going to go. And you'll see these are almost the exact same size. But you'll notice I don't have any, I don't have this little down arrow. I don't, I don't see all my little subfolders. In this case, my sub data sets. It's because a data set and a directory are two different things. I lose the ability to manage data sets when I use rsync. rsync is really good for directories, like the ones in my stacks folder or my media folder, which also uses a bunch of directories. But if I have something and I have sub data sets, I'm just going to want to use my data protection tab and set up a replication task, which is super simple. But I just wanted today to kind of make you a little more familiar with the rsync command. Um, it's really, really powerful. Definitely get used to playing with it if you need to move data around from one place to another. It's very, very powerful. It's very good for incremental backups uh, and differential backups and things like that, as long as you're working with data, uh, directories and not data sets. Uh, if you guys have any questions about this, though, post in the comment below. Also, like and subscribe to the channel. I love doing this kind of stuff for you guys, and I want to be able to keep doing it, and it really is, helps me out a lot if you like and subscribe. If you really want to say thank you, you can buy me a coffee.